study really complex processes. Now, I'm going to review a study that I did, which was um, really jazz in an fMRI scanner. And this was done with a colleague of mine, Alan Brown, at the NIH. This is a short video of how we did this project. So this is a plastic MIDI piano keyboard that we use for the jazz experiments. And it's a 35 key uh, keyboard that is designed to fit both inside the scanner, be magnetically safe, have minimal interference that would contribute to any artifact, and have these cushions that it can rest on the player's legs while they're lying down in the scanner playing on their back. And it works like this. This doesn't actually produce any sound. It sends out what's called a MIDI signal, or a musical instrument digital interface, through these wires into the box of the computer, which then trigger high-quality piano samples like this. Okay, so it works. And so through this piano keyboard, we now have a means to actually take a musical process and study it. So what do you do now that you have this cool piano keyboard? You can't just sort of, you know, it's great, we got this keyboard. We actually have to come with a scientific experiment. And so the experiment really rests on the following. What happens in the brain during something that's memorized and overlearned, and what happens in the brain during something that is spontaneously generated or improvised in a way that's matched motorically and in terms of lower, le lower level sensory motor features? And so I have here what we call the paradigms. There's a scale paradigm, which is just playing a scale up and down memorized, and then there's improvising on a scale, quarter notes, metronome, right hand. Scientifically very safe, but musically really boring. And then there's the bottom one, which is called the jazz paradigm. And so what we did was we brought professional jazz players to the NIH, and we had them memorize this piece of music on the left, the lower left, uh, which is what you heard me playing. And then we had them improvise to the same exact chord changes. And if you could hit that lower right sound icon, that's an example of what was recorded in the scanner. So in the end, you know, it's not the most natural environment, but they're able to play real music. And, you know, I've listened to that solo 200 times, and I still like it. And so and the, the musicians, were, they were comfortable in the end. And so we first measured the number of notes. Were they, in fact, just playing a lot of more notes when they were improvising? That was not what was going on. And then we looked at the brain activity. I'm going to try to condense this for you. These are contrast maps that are showing subtractions between what changes when you're improvising versus when you're doing something memorized. In red, is area that's active in the prefrontal cortex, frontal lobe of the brain. And in blue, this area that was deactivated. And so we had this focal area called the medial prefrontal cortex that went way up in activity. We had this broad patch of area called the lateral prefrontal cortex that went way down in activity. I'll summarize that for you here. Now, these are multifunctional areas of the brain. As I like to say, these are not the jazz areas of the brain. Right? <laughs> they, they do a whole host of things that have to do with uh, self-reflection, introspection, working memory, and so forth. Really, consciousness is seated in the frontal lobe. But we have this combination of an area that's thought to be involved in self-monitoring turning off and this area that's thought to be autobiographical or self-expressive turning on. And we think, at least in this preliminary, you know, it's, it's one study, it's, it's probably wrong, but it's one study. Uh, <laughs> we think that at least a reasonable hypothesis is that to be creative, you have to have this weird dissociation in your frontal lobe. One area turns on and a big area shuts off so that you're not inhibited, so that you're willing to make a stake, so that you're not constantly shutting down all of these new generative impulses.